assalamu alaikum students of cambridge grade 8 today in this lecture we are going to start 1.02 of the chapter states of matter in the previous lecture we actually discussed about the major properties of solid liquid and gas we talked about matter that what's matter anything which occupies space which has mass volume and has the capacity to occupy some space so all such matter all such substances are called matter and there are basically three states of matter as you know which we discussed in our previous lecture the one is the solid then the liquid and the gas okay so basically and we also said about the properties that which type of properties does the solid or the liquid or the gaseous state have we also went through some examples so now it's time to move on and to move towards our next unit which is unit 1.02 okay students before moving toward the main topic of our lecture we should go through the major differences between solid liquid and gas okay so in the previous lecture we talked about the shape the volume and the flow of solid liquid and gas okay so now we are going to revise that concept so that we can move or execute our lecture very smoothly so first talk about the shape while talking about the solid we know that the solid has a very definite shape the solid molecule or atom basically they are not stationary they are not to completely stopped or in the position of rest but they actually moves in their own axis at their own place we can say that they actually vibrates okay so if someone asks you about it is the solid particles or atoms or molecule are stationary or in the form of rest so the answer would be no because they uh, their particles or the atoms or molecules they are always in motion but the motion is um, we can say it is not completely stationary they just move in their own place they just move in their own place we can say so and if we talk about the liquid so the liquid shape is not definite as we know and if we talk about gas so gaseous shape is definitely not definite as well so the solid has a definite shape its particle or the molecule or the atom basically they vibrate or we can say that they actually spin by like, in their own surrounding or in their own space they do not just move from one place to an another place like gas or the liquid so the solid particle cannot move from one place to another place which we have to remember they just move in their own places okay but uh, the solid uh, but the liquid particles can move definitely because they have uh, the particle have uh, a bit space between them and the gaseous atom definitely or the molecule of the gas definitely uh, move from one place to another place because they have much space between them so the basically if we talk about uh, diffusion so the diffusion solid is very less and diffusion is something like mm, the movement of particles from one place to another place okay so in solid because the there is no such space so the movement of the particle will not be uh, we cannot it is not be considerable or we cannot say that uh, the because the solid does not have any space the molecule in the solid does not have any space so it means that uh, the particle cannot move easily from one place to another place whereas if we look at the liquid so the liquid particles have a space between them the atoms the molecule of the liquid have a space between them so they can move from one place to another place okay but their pace or we can say their speed is quite low as compared to gas okay but higher than the solid okay and if we talk about gas so the particles in the gas we can say the diffusion in the gas because uh, diffusion uh, as i told you that it's the movement of molecule from one place to another place okay so the diffusion in gas is quite higher because the molecule have a very big or we can say that a very large space between them so the diffusion is higher in gas than in liquid we can say it's just moderate in liquid and it is not found in solid so you have to remember these points and if we talk about the flow so flow is as i told you the flow is in terms of the diffusion okay then the diffusion is the movement of molecule from one place to another place okay for example if we talk about gas so uh, for example we can take the example of perfume if i just spray perfume in a corner of a room so the smell can be 
and basically this man actually travels from one place to another place and the person um, uh, living in the next room uh, would definitely get that smell after some time because the gas molecule have the ability to move from one place to another place where in uh, terms of liquid we can take the example of Neil uh, for example the blue color uh, which we use to um, which we actually use for white clothes uh, Neil um, rainbow Neil so basically uh, for example, or we can take the example of ink as well. If you, we pour some uh, drops of ink in water, so the ink actually tries to distribute itself in that particular container of the water. But the diffusion is quite low as we can say. The same term can be applied or the same example can be applied in terms of Neil. For example, if you talk about um, um, Neil, so, uh, uh, or it's also called whitener sometimes. So uh, basically, the molecules of that blue color moves very slowly, but it moves. So we can say that, that the molecules are moving moderately with a moderate speed. Okay, but in solid, there is no such diffusion as found. So we, if we talk about the flow, the solid cannot flow, the liquid can flow, and the gas can flow definitely very easily. So these were the difference between the solid, liquid, and gas. Okay, students. Now we are going to study about the conversion of these states. Basically there are three major states of matter, solid, liquid and gas. So if we talk about the conversion, so conversion means that the conversion of one state to another state. For example the conversion of solid into liquid or the conversion of liquid into gas or the conversion of gas into liquid or the conversion of liquid into, ga uh, into solid or gas into solid so basically these are the conversion which we are going to study but there are some major headings which you have to which we have to actually go through so in just in these conversion basically we will try to identify that what is actually happening okay so first let's talk about melting point okay so melting point uh, first of all wherever you just uh, see the point it means that there is the presence of temperature okay so uh, what happens in melting point? Melting point basically is a phenomena in which a substance or we can say it's usually a solid melts and when a solid melts if we record the temperature so the temperature at which the solid starts melting is termed as melting point. I repeat the temperature at which the solid starts melting it's called as melting point okay. For example if we take the example of wax candle wax okay when uh, we just line it up so what actually happens the the wax starts melting the wax is solid and we can say that as far as its state is concerned the wax is solid and when we provide a temperature when we light it up so what actually happens uh, it starts melting and when the wax starts melt when it gets totally melted so that point at which the wax starts it's melting it that's termed as melting point okay so we can take the example of wax or any other material like that and if we record the temperature at which the wax starts it's melting so uh, by the use of thermometer or such device usually we do through thermometers so the temperature at which the solid or the wax starts it's melting and if the temperature is quite recorded so that would be termed as melting point Okay, for example, if the wax melts at 65 degrees Celsius and the thermometer shows us that the temperature is 65 when the wax starts melting. So, we can say that, that the melting point of the wax would be 65 degrees Celsius. Moving towards the next thing, which is the boiling point. Okay, so boiling point. Now, the term melt basically is applied to solids. Now, but we talk when we talk about the boiling. So this term is usually applied to liquid. For example, we have uh, heard that the water boil, the liquid boils. Okay. So basically, both are quite same, but um, the there is a bit a difference between the definitions. Okay. So if we talk about uh, the boiling, so when the liquid starts boiling, okay when you provide temperature and the liquid starts boiling or just bubbles start to come up uh, that temperature and when you record the temperature at which the liquid starts boiling so that temperature the particular temperature is called or the particular phenomena is called boiling point okay so for example let's take the example of uh, water if we t uh, if we take a container containing water 
so and if we provide heat so after some time when the temperature reaches up to 100 degrees celsius and we can record it by using thermometer so when the temperature reaches up to 100 degrees celsius the water will start moving the water molecule will start moving to with each other and they will start colliding and uh, the process at which the bubbles will start to come up the process basically uh, there would be a time when the bubbles will come up at the surface of the water and that particular temperature if it is, if it is noticed so it, the phenomena would be called as boiling point so we in a simple definition we can say that the temperature at which the liquid starts boiling okay and the temperature with the liquid starts boiling is termed as the boiling point okay so you ha whenever we are talking or dealing about the melting at the boiling point you have to remember that you have to deal with temperature if you will not use the word temperature in your answers it means that you are gonna miss some points as well okay so for example if we talk about melting so in melting uh, you have to write the definition like the temperature at which the solid starts melting okay you have mentioned the temperature at which okay the temperature at which basically this plays a very crucial role in your definition otherwise it can lead to the reduction of your marks as well so and as same as in terms of the boiling point we can go for um, we can actually go for the same thing um, we can say that at the temperature at which the liquid is just boiling okay so we uh, you have to remember that you have to mention the particular temperature word okay in order to get good marks okay moving toward the next setting which is evaporation okay so evaporation basically is the phenomena at which the liquid starts boiling and the w it starts converted into the liquid starts getting converted into uh, the gaseous state for example if you boil water and if you boil it just continuously so definitely water has the capacity to leave or escape so it will the molecule will try to escape out in the air in form of vapors okay and the temperature uh, or basically evaporation is just like that the ba um, that when the water molecule start to evaporate or just comes out from the surface of the liquid that's termed as evaporation so if we talk about evaporation so basically evaporation is a phenomena in which the liquid states get start starts get converted into the gaseous state okay or we can say that into the vapors as well because vapor also contains gas as well as some quantity of the water as well so evaporation is that process in which the liquid starts you know when we provide temperature so the liquid starts boiling and after that um, the liquid gets converted into gaseous state now let's take the example for example if we are having a container having water uh, and if we provide temperature so as you know the boiling point of the water is 100 degrees celsius and at 100 degrees celsius the water will start boiling okay and if the process continues so what will happen the water will just stay or will just go um, out in the air so definitely because the, the water molecule can escape very easily so we can say that the water molecule will escape out in the form of vapors from the surface of the liquid it will just go out in the air okay so this process termed as the operation and when we talk about condensation so condensation is the opposite okay um, basically in condensation the gaseous molecule turns into the liquid okay for example it happens in our refrigerators and our refrigerator there's a gas which is actually filled and that gas converts the um, it actually gets converted into um, into liquid okay so condensation basically the process in which the gas converts into liquid so it's we can say that it's just opposite of the operation as well but um, not completely okay because in operation the solid the liquid converted into vapors okay not com vapor mean gas plus liquid okay whereas in condensation the gas converts into liquid now let's talk about freezing freezing basically this is a very common phenomena you can observe in your home very easily for example um, this phenomena of freezing happens with liquid usually for example if you just you know, for example we can take the example of uh, ice cube as well mm, so for the making of the ice cube we usually take water and we put it into our fridge and after some time it just gets totally freeze so basically the freezing is a phenomenon in which the liquid 
turns into or converts into solid okay so the freezing is a phenomenon in which the liquid is getting a water into solid state so basically these are the conversion of states okay students now there's a graph on your screen as you can see and this is the graph for the heating curve of water for example in graph you can say that the uh, in graph you can basically from the graph you can actually predict that what is actually happening okay so if we start from the bottom at zero degree celsius you know that this is the process at zero degree celsius usually what happens uh, or we can say that at the temperature of minus one minus two or zero the water uh, or the liquid basically gets converted into solid it actually freezes okay so below zero degree celsius the water is just totally solid like for example we can take the example of ice so here below zero degree celsius the water is completely a solid you know ice then if we provide temperature so what will happen for example now at zero degree celsius for example from minus 1 or minus 2 degree celsius now the temperature comes up to 0 degree okay so at 0 degree the ice will start melting okay and this is the point from B to C as you can see and when it will start melting so what will happen after some time the ice will totally get converted into liquid and this can be shown by the line which is represented by C and D in which we have got water from the ice okay and then from d to e you can see that if we provide heat so the water will get converted into steam or vapor we can say but if we just reverse the process in the opposite direction so we can say that the steam get converted into or the steam will get converted into again in the liquid okay so basically condensation and evaporation these are the opposite phenomena okay now let's talk about the summary of this heating curve basically heating curve tells us about that what actually happens when some uh, thing which is totally freeze up and when uh, uh, on the providing the temperature on providing temperature it change changes the states okay so basically this heating curve is a graph which is actually showing that the ice is going to come water into water and how it converts into water okay so below the degree, 0 degrees Celsius as you know the temperature would be like uh, minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 or more below than uh, that temperature so at that at below 0 degrees Celsius the ice would definitely exist as a solid but after uh, getting to the temperature up to 0 degrees Celsius it will start melting definitely and then after getting melted it would it would totally get converted into water and then after some time if you provide heat so it will get converted into um vapors or we can say that is steam but if you reverse the process so the steam get converted into liquid which is termed as condensation okay so basically when in this process we are providing heat energy okay and the heat energy is uh, usually calculated or mentioned or represented in terms of joule basically the unit of joule the unit of heat is joule okay so this is a heating curve of water okay students in the previous slide you actually watched that we were moving from bottom to top but here in the cooling curve of water which we are going to study we will move from top to bottom okay as you can see the graph for example at 110 degree celsius the gas actually exists as a steam we can say but after some time the if the process of condensation take place okay at low temperature so what would happen that the gas will get converted into liquid through the process of condensation and if the liquid is provided a temperature of 0 degree celsius it will start freezing and if it gets the temperature below to zero for example minus one minus two minus three minus four minus five minus six or something else like that below zero degrees celsius so it would convert it into ice okay so basically this is just the opposite of the 
heating curve okay in heating curve we were just moving from bottom to top but in the cooling curve we move from top to bottom so this is the cooling curve okay students so basically there are some practice questions which are given on page uh, of the unit uh, 1.02 and these questions are given on page number 15 in the fundamental chemistry work so you have to just go through that and after going through the lecture after watching this lecture just go through 1.02 read it thoroughly and try to attempt these questions thank you so very much if you have query you can email us and then uh, we will try to uh, we will try to reply to your queries as soon as possible. Thank you so very much.